Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, this is our last class, and next week will be final exam week. And so today we're going to do a first a review for final, and then a uh, look at chapter ten. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. Um, I will go over a example uh, that's going to be similar to the final hands on. Um, and you kind of have a feel of what's going to be kind of like the final hands-on. And then um, there are multiple choice, just like midterm. So final exam will be very similar to midterm. You will have one hands-on problem, uh, not timed. You have multiple choice that's timed, but I give you plenty of time. And you will have a three-day win window to do to take the final um, from Sunday because uh, I do want to kind of cross a weekend day, uh, but our final exam week uh, starts kind of like Sunday, not Saturday, so I can't include Saturday. Saturday is part of this week. Uh, officially, I have to, so it starts Sunday. So we're going to start Sunday at 10 till Tuesday uh, evening. That's probably our window, and we'll have multiple choice and hands-on part. And I will send an email out for those uh, who will be missing the lecture. So first, we're going to take a quick look at the final review. And this PowerPoint is um, available on Angel. Uh, so I'm not going to go over all the concepts. I just want to uh, go over an example of what the uh, final hands-on will be like. OK, so you can kind of uh, take a look at these. Uh, these are just a summary for from chapter 5 on that we covered in the second half. Uh, you can take a look at these concepts and things, OK? But I will skip over all this stuff. What I will do is I will go over, go switch over. And today I had really bad luck because my uh, my home's internet was down, and so I had to run to a neighbor's house. Luckily, I have a very nice neighbor, so I'm sitting in my neighbor's home and doing my three two classes, uh, Java and PHP. Somebody else's house. Okay. Um, hopefully, I'll have to call them after and have hopefully get it fixed. So let's look at the example of trying to get internet. OK. Forget all of that. Let's go to, I need to open up my uh, PHP sample page. OK, let's go here. Um, on my page, there is a review example, OK. Um, on the example, uh, let's take a look at this example. Uh, I'm using this as a kind of a sample for your for your hands-on problem. What we have is a uh, kind of bookstore, uh, and we can uh, from the uh, employee of this bookstore we can add books and then show a list of books that we have. A very simple one, just like the um, guest. Uh, uh, the guest book, signing the guest book problem that you did in chapter 8 is very similar. OK, so let's look at the book list first. Um, so um, this program shows the list of the books that we have in the database. OK, and then we have another link. We have another link called Add New Book where we can add um, new books. So for example, if I put 2222, two, 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 uh, just test once, and my um, any author, uh, let's say Smith, I think I used his name already. Uh, title, let's say test, OK, test book. And price uh, 
Okay. I hit register or well, add. Okay. So this book is now in our list. And I have a debug message. So you can see what we used the SQL command to put this in. So this debug message is already also in my code. I didn't comment it out purposely so that you can see the um, the SQL command. So that's the application. So we have two programs, one to show the list and one to add the book. Okay. Um, now let's look at the code behind it. So to before I look at the uh, code behind it, first let's think if you were to be given a problem like this, okay, any kind of books or um, anything, um, let's say um, maintaining that you're selling, uh, like t-shirts, uh, like um, your souvenirs, um, like computers, anything, okay, that if you want a, if you encounter a problem that you want to write a program where you can add Okay, items to to your database, and then show items. So those two programs. Uh, let's see. Problem. Okay. No audio. Why no audio? Anybody else can hear me? I can see my. Um, I can see the my voice going up and down. No audio. Anybody else can you hear me? Do I have a problem with the audio? Okay, so most people can hear. All right, go. I'll, I'll go ahead and move move along. Um. So I uh, where I where are I? Okay, I'm going to look at the. Uh, when you come encounter this problem, so first thing you need to do is think how to design the program, right? So you are going to write two programs, one to list and one to add. Before you do that, you have to have a database ready, right? You have to have a database to store the data, and then you can write the PHP program to pull up the data and then save too. So first we have to design the database, okay? For a problem like this, show a list of books. Okay, where's my list of books? One book list. Okay, if you're given a problem and you probably will be given the items that you need to track. In this case, the books. Uh, you want to track the ISBN number, the author, the title, and the price. You probably will. Uh, people will provide you if this is a real world. Of world website, they probably will provide you with some kind of screen markups, which shows okay, for the book list, I want these 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 things on my book list. Okay, so you know kind of the data elements that they want you to track. That's for the business, and then you can then you add anything that you need as a programmer to make it work. Maybe like the primary key. Uh, those things that you need to add. So first thing is you design a database. So for a um, our example like this, we have a book list and we have we want to track SBN number, author, title, price, and if need to be other things. Um, so how do we design this table? So what should be our in, in our book list table? So we will have a table of like a book, and then we'll store all this information. So first thing, we want to design this table. Okay, this table should have the ISBN column, the author column, the title column, the price column. Okay, that's the minimum. We need these. And then other things that you may need to track. Uh, maybe the updated date or added date. The, you know, the date that this book was added to the inventory, and any other things that you you might be helpful, but minimally we need these. And so let's see, we are going. Let's say we're going to use that minimal. Okay, so let's look at our uh, SQL statement for the review part. Okay, so my table. After you think about it and you know the columns, you need to 
write the create table statement to create that table. So the create table statement in our case, okay, here we have create table and then books table, and we're going to have the ISBN number, which is uh, 13 characters long, and it's not null, meaning we can't really have it, a null value, and you really don't need this, actually. You can just say character 13 and primary key, because primary key will actually uh, restrict this column to be null, null, okay. Because the ISBN number is kind of unique, so we can use that as our primary key if we choose. Um, if you don't like it, you can create another system generated book ID if you need to. But in our case, let's just use the ISBN as our primary key, and we have this author. Um, that's varchoff 50 that means we okay, it's a character type, okay? And then title, again, character type. Uh, the book's title could be long, so I'm using a longer or larger field of 100 characters up to 100 character title field. And then the price is a float, which uh, uh, it's uh, going to be like uh, two digits after the decimal point, um, four digit kind of total-ish. Uh, this I probably should have it a little more than that. Okay, five. Okay. Um, after I create the table, okay, then I have maybe the company will give you a spreadsheet or a text file or a printed on paper. Now here are starting inventory. Oh, here's here's a list of things I want you to kind of put in the database for starters. So then you write an insert statement and then put all the existing things in. Okay, you can write the insert and into the books. Okay, values would be this one and this one. So you can write one insert statement and put the different values, like four different values into the insert statement. If you run this in, in Putty, it will create a table and then add the four uh, records. Because in this case, it's just examples. I use four. Most likely, you probably would be given a text file. Okay, and then for the text file, you can use the load data, okay, uh, load data local in file, and then pointing to the file, and then that puts the records in, right? Just like what you did in chapter seven. So that's the database backend. So we have to set that up. Um, I run this uh, this afternoon, so I have all the tables created. Okay, if you want to try this. Uh, example, okay, if you're pointing to my uh, link on, on my page, it, it should work fine now. But if you want to kind of recreate this problem on your own, then you need to run this script on your account, okay? Um, and this uh, script is posted on Angel, so you have access to it. So that's the database. After that's done, okay, now let's write this page. How do you write the book list page? It's a review of chapter eight. Okay, so the book list dot PHP, okay, we are going to first thing first, making connection to the database, right? So we're making connection, oops, making connection, we're using the database AD 699, uh, that's, that's the database I used. For you, you use your account. Then the connection, we're going to say MySQL Connect and then localhost and the username and the password. So that's your connection string. You check if that's a good connection. If it is, okay, we're going to select 8699. Okay, if that's good, so we are now pointing to the right database and um, if everything's good, okay, we are ready to perform our query. So to list the books in the book table, what do we need? What kind of query do we need? We need a select query, right? We're going to run a select, pretty much select star from the books table, and then we're going to process the re return record set and display them on in this table format onto the screen. 
Okay. The way to do that is put the data output and write it into the HTML format, right? And that will show up. So here's our SQL. We say select star from table name, which is the books. And then we're going to um, uh, do my SQL query to so run the query through the connection and pass the string. And then we're going to get this back, right? We are going to get a record set back. Now our, for this page, we just need to look through the record set and then put the result into a tabled format. OK, so here's our table. OK, here's the table tag. OK, that's our table. And then this first, first line, that's our headings, the column headings. That's this line, this line, right, this line. This line. So the column headings. Okay, back here. This is the column headings. After that row is done, okay, we have the column headings. In that, the, that row is done the, to the end of the TR tag. Our first row is done. Then we're going to actually loop through the data and put the data from the database into these cells, starting from the second row. So we're going to go. Ask, say, MySQL fetch row. So each time we loop, we fetch the next row. And we are going to use the fetch row and assign to this row, dollar sign row. So what is the data type for dollar sign row? This row um, variable. Row variable is going to be an array, OK? It's an array of array of the record that we get back, okay, one at a time. So for the first iteration, we're going to get this book, um, this this book, okay. This is the Java Two for Professional Developers. So we can get this book, and the books. ISBN number will become the first element of the array. The uh, author will become the second element of the array. And then title becomes the third element of the array. And then price will become the fourth element of the array. So your array okay, is going to have one, two, three, four columns of four elements. Each element is the one corresponds to the column information. So row, row, again, row, here's the row. Every loop, row gets one record breaking out by the columns. Okay. So now row 0, the first element of array, is the ISBN number. Row 1 is the author. Row 2 is the title. Row 3, index 3, is the price. So we're going to put them in cells. So from starting the second row, we have a TR tag for row, and then TD tag for the cell, okay, for the column. Then we're going to put the row zero in this first cell, first column, and then the row one goes to the next column. Row two goes to the next column with all TD tags. Row three goes to the last column. And then we are going to enclose in the, the TR. So with one iteration of the while loop, we displayed one record from the database. Okay. Then we're going to go to the next iteration. Okay. We fetch a new row, fetch a new record, and then put it into the cells. Okay. And then go back, do the same thing for the another record. So for each time this row uh, information got refreshed, right? Got to the overridden, all this new row information about the book overrides the old one. And the row will always have the current one and we will display them. So after this well loop is done, we have all the books in the table and we ended OK, all the rows, and then we at the end of the while loop, uh, after we stop, 
we print the end of the table tag. Okay, so we enclose our table. Okay, uh, this one when you reach the end of the record, the MS SQL fetch rule will return a null, will return null, and then you you stop. Okay, that's when the while loop stops. And then after that, I can just close the database connection because I done processing all the data. That will be it. My page is done, and I'm it. this is it for this uh, this code. Any questions on this? Okay, this is like half of the half of uh, our application. Okay, the other half is how to write the um, the ad. Okay, so we're going to display this form, and then you're going to fill out the form and hit add or register, add new, hit the button. We will take the information that user entered for the new book and add it to the database. Okay, so for this next part, okay, um, it's very similar to our midterm, right? We get a form and we hit the button, we go to the next page, we can retrieve. And we can get all that information. It's just that midterm we haven't covered, we haven't covered the database part yet. So we are just displaying it back as a confirmation to the user. We really didn't save the data per se. But this now we just add that piece that we're saving the data to the database. Okay. So the first part of it displaying this form is old all the stuff we know this in chapter four. Okay, let's now look at the insert book. Oh, I'm missing a. Uh, this is the processing page. I'm missing the code for the display. Okay, the display. Let me just show you right here on the web page because it's a HTML. So for this page, um, it's a HTML with the forms. Okay. So here's the HTML. I have the header, and then I have the heading, and then I have the form. And it's a post, and it's going to call instabook.php. On the on the form, I have like a table just to be to have the form the controls line up. And uh, we have ISBN, which this is the label, and then we have the text box. Okay, text input. And um, the name is ISBN. We have a, another text input, author, another text input. That's the title of the book and the price of the book. And then we have a uh, submit button. So the type is submit, and the value is where uh, what's showing on the button. We could say add new book, uh, register, or add anything that you feel like is is appropriate over here. So that's the form. Okay, so this is old material. Um, now the processing page. Now the processing page. The first half it will be exactly the same as what we did in midterm, like chapter four. We retrieve everything, and then we clean up, then we validate. Okay, and then we put it into the database. For this example, I'm not going to kind of um, Go over details on validation and cleanup. Uh, I'm going to focus on the last part. How do you save the information to the database? So first portion, retrieve. So I'm retrieving all the information from the form. Okay, because they're going to. I use the post method. All the information will be in the post auto global array. So I'm going to go to the array and then retrieve my information. So the ISBN number will from the post array will get the ISBN number out. Now I'm going to get the author information out and save it into the author variable. Get the title information, save into the title, get to the price, and then save into the price. And this part is like one liner of a quick validation. I'm going to check to make sure um, all boxes have information. Okay, and um, if they all have information, then that's fine. If you kind of missed, and then I'll have a generic error message saying you have not entered all the required information. Please go back and fill out the form. 
Okay, so this is a simple validation, nothing, compli no, nothing complicated. On the final, I will tell you whether you need, uh, I will, in the instructions, I'll uh, list whether you need uh, some kind of validation or not. Or not. Okay, so read the directions. Uh, most cases, I think, uh, and most I would just ask you to validate if one of the, if some of the fields are uh, have data. I'm not going to validate um, the complicated like email validation, phone number validation, um, not uh, those level of validation. Okay, so after retrieve data, clean up validation. Now I need to save, save. I'm pointing to the database, uh, and I'm making the connection. The connection is good. Picking the database. Now I'm ready. Pointing the table to the right table. Now I'm writing my insert query. So I'm going to insert into the books table. Okay, and values. I'm going to list the values. Okay. So again, this is following the same thing as what you did in chapter eight. The guest book. It's just we have like four fields instead of two. Uh, it's similar. So now you're going to have um, ISBN author title price, okay, into your insert statement. And uh, I have this as the, in my local version, I commented out the debug, but on the web server, I uncommented the debug. So you have your debug statement. And then I'm going to run this query through the connection. Okay. And if it's good, that means the record is saved. So I present. OK, if it's good, I present a confirmation message. OK, book inserts into the database. Um, if not, then there's um, error. OK, after that's saved, I close the database. And then I have a link to view the book list. Okay. So that's it for this example. Um, your final exam hands-on will be very similar to this example. Um, so it won't be books, it will be something else that I want you to um, track. Uh, you create you would create a table, okay, and then you would uh, put some initial data and then you would write the book list or something list page. And then you would write add new item page. OK, uh, add new item page would be two-part form. If you want, you can do it all you want. But uh, you can do a two-part. One will be displaying the form, just similar to this. And when you click on the button, then you retrieve data and save it into the database. So that's it for the hands-on. Any questions on, on this part? So n nothing to worry about. Um, the code for this example from this final review is posted on Angel, so you can download and then kind of uh, look at it over. You may want to try it without looking at the code yourself to see if you can do it. Okay, um, and then also look back at chapter eight on the assigned guest book problem. This is chapter eight. Yes, chapter eight is the one that going to the database. So that's the um, review for final. Uh, any questions? If not, I'm going to move on to um, the uh, chapter ten. Uh, this chapter ten uh, it talks about an important topic, uh, but it's an advanced topic. Uh, so I'm going to give you a taste of it and uh, leave it at that, and you can read about it some more if you are a um, programmer uh, and if you have used other programming languages. Uh, these may sound familiar, the terms and things. If you are totally new to programming, don't worry about it. Okay, um, this is a uh, just that you kind of get some terms. Uh, get the sound of the terms and then later on when you go into programming, you will encounter these concepts again and again and again uh, in many, many classes. So you have 
plenty of chance to get it. So don't worry if uh, what I'm saying doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, now let's go. I need to go to the objects. Um, object oriented uh, programming is a uh, style of programming. Okay, um, nowadays, majority, I would say, majority, majority of the code out there are written in this kind of uh, style, object oriented. It's because then all these codes can be reused again and again. So that you are building upon the objects that other people already written. So if you need some specific feature, most likely somebody already wrote it, you don't have to recreate it every time. You will build upon on it. Um, so that's the advantage of object oriented programming and that's why most of the real applications is um, on this is written in this kind of fashion okay uh, concept I'm going to just kind of skim through the, the, the basic concepts for those of you who have in object oriented programming this is all old stuff for those of you who are new it's going to be very hard to Kind of grasp it the very first time, right? Um, it needs a, the learning curve for object oriented. If you come from a traditional step by step background, is um, is there's a little bit of a leap, I would say, um, yeah, kind of leap of the faith. <laughs> uh, you will need to see many examples and get used to it and practice it before you actually become like. Oh, now it's like ice skating. You walk and then you ice skate, right? You have to have that process of uh, getting used to it, and then once you know, it's very easy. And so, object oriented refers to the concept of merging really variables and functions. Into, uh, uh, this one is a it's full of terms. Object-oriented programming, in a nutshell, is you organize your code into kind of modules, and these modules are called objects. And in the objects, you would say, okay, for this kind of kind of logical unit, I want to group the kind of properties, uh, variables, okay, variables, and functions related to this this concept, this unit, together. Okay, so I have this now unit that has some variables and have some functions, and I treat that as one unit. And with that unit, then other people can use your whole unit, okay, and get all of the code. So we are kind of dividing the problems into smaller pieces, and each piece we use. And objects and, and components. So when we try to solve the larger problem, we solve the small problems first, and then we kind of piece together all the components to get our large problem resolved. So data refers to the information contained with about this unit. For example, let's say a um, quick example, um, student, OK? Um, for mm, the student information system, like uh, our college's student database, uh, and the program that deal with it, uh, we probably dealing with the student first name, last name, social security number. Okay, so these are called the data elements. If we were to creating the student as an object, then the data elements would be kind of the attributes or the properties or the uh, features about the student, so names and social security numbers. And then the functions may be, OK, um, let's, um, what, is, uh, what is the student's uh, like address, what's the student's email? 
So that will be like a feature that I, we can ask. Okay, give me the student's email address. Uh, that will be maybe a function and uh, maybe we can ask uh, how many units the students have, have taken uh, admission. That may be another one that we, and so those are called methods, okay. So we have data and methods kind of related to the student and we make this all whole thing packaged um, and then have a student object, okay. Uh, Java, C++, and all uh, Python, new programming languages, um, all these all have this object-oriented design capability so that you can write your code uh, and then put package the things together as objects. Okay, now um, Encapsulation means all the information about the student are contained in that object um, so that it's kind of a little bit hidden from the outside. Um, you, you don't kind of go um, arbitrarily modify the student's information without going through the proper channels. So this is called encapsulation. All code and the data are contained with the object itself, okay, and then the, the method that you provide, the functionality you provide is the ways to interact with the data, with your object. Um, let's look at the example, I, the sum of these concepts, um, I'm going to kind of skip over, all right, um, maybe I should ask, uh, maybe if you could click on the check, check mark, okay, how many of you have uh, encountered, that kind of have seen the object oriented programming concept before in other classes. So I know I'm talking to a experienced audience or I'm talking to a brand new audience. Or everybody's shy <laughs> about their okay. So I got a few who already know the stuff. Oh, but never in depth. <laughs> okay, if you are uh, my Java class, then it's you know it's a um, then it's talked about in several weeks. Uh, okay, never touch them up. Oh, <laughs> beginning programming class usually just give you kind of. Okay, touch the bomb, and then the second class, the second programming class usually is the one that focus on object oriented. Um, so, okay, uh, in our class we only have this kind of last week. Uh, again, I'm going to go a touch and uh, kind of strategy on this topic, but I'll give you examples. Um, so I think I want to skip over this concept stuff and because this is very dry if you have no idea, it's, like, it's very not fun. So let's look at the um, actual uh, kind of usage, okay, in our, um, I'm going to skip over this and let's go look at the example. Okay, if I go back to our um, chapter 10, okay. Um, Let's look at our um, look at um, some sample site that possibly you would be kind of asked to write. Okay, let's look at this is a coffee shop website. Okay, um, we have a coffee shop and uh, here's our uh, kind of uh, uh, the lingo or the the catchphrase for our for our for our coffee shop, and here's the welcome message part. Okay, welcome to coffee, and then you get a list of your product. Okay, 
and then you may have a shopping cart, maybe a fancier shopping cart, but um, this is you can add, you can order stuff. Okay, uh, so this is a basic kind of storefront. Um, and if you were to write this program, okay, um, with what you have learned so far, okay, all the way through chapter nine, can you write an application like that kind of do this kind of page? Can give you a minute, kind of half a minute to to ponder about the site. Where happened to my mouse? Okay, it's here. Can you write this page? Everybody should be able to write this page, right? Yes, because this is just like the book list that we just went over. It's very similar. Yes, sure, everybody, good. Uh, so you would have a created database and put the table in the back, one or two, depending on how how you, how you are organizing your data. Okay, uh, maybe one table in the database, and you would have the product uh, listings and then descriptions and the price. Okay, and that is stored in your database, and you can have another page to add items like a new coffee comes in, and then. You if you make it a little bit more complicated, you could have two tables. One is for category, one is for actual product. What category would be like this kind of coffee or, uh, you know, uh, by either by region or by, I, I, I'm, I don't know coffee, <laughs> I'm not a coffee drinker. So it could be by region like Jamaican coffee or, uh, Hawaiian coffee, uh, or it could be by type. So you could have category and then the product and so forth. Okay. Uh, if you want to track the order, then then you need to add more, like the order uh, table where you track the customers and the, what stuff they ordered. Um, let's take that aside. Just the um, just the uh, product itself. So you have the tape table and you create that table in the database, you put the initial, your inventory in there, either by bulk loaded or by doing one by one, depending on how you do it, you have the initial data. And then if you have that in, all in the database, this page is a snap to create, right? You would have your uh, title and if you have a nice design, you can have a nice kind of um, picture or different things, um, and then welcome message, and then uh, you would write that kind of book list .php or coffee list .php page. You would go uh, connect to the database, do a select query, retrieve all the data, and then put it into a table format. Okay, and then when they order, they can just you know if they click. Uh, this is a um, this is we are adding um, app the total, and when we put items, uh, we are keeping this information in an array. All the shopping carts are implemented as an array. I wouldn't say absolute all. I would say most of the shopping cart out there implementation is array. Okay, so that's yeah. You, know, you can write this. Good, everybody. You know, that's what I want you to get out of this class is be able to write a page like this and the page to add and the page to log in. And the, you know, we all know how to do that on chapter nine. All right. So now after you write this, okay, good, and you are so good, the next customer comes along. Okay, you are the web developer, you did this, very proud and good. Now next customer comes along. Back. Where's my? What happened to my back back button? Oh, did I just directly click on this? Okay. Now, if you, okay, if 
I now I got a new customer, okay, here, and who's selling electronics. Okay. He wants you to program this site. If you look at it, it's like, okay, have a title and I have uh, the the um, catchphrase for my stuff, and then I have the welcome message. I have products, description, again a shopping cart like uh, font. It's just a little different look and feel. But when you think about it, this 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 other than the look and feel. The basic features of this page is very similar to the other one, right? It's very similar to this one. OK, so now you say, OK, then now I have to do it. I copy and paste all my code I did for my previous customer, and I change it, make some changes, and then the second one will be a little bit easier right? to, to, to come up with. Now, at the same time, you come. There's this third customer knocking on the door, and then have you develop her this develop this site. It's like, okay, old antiques looks great, but now this is the time you say, oh my gosh, this is almost the same as the one I did, the previous two I did. Okay. Now. After this, you get this customer for a while. It's like, oh, I wish I could reuse the code. I did it the first time. And then um, I don't have to redo this copy and paste and read just. And you wish that, right? And that's the theory behind um, how, do you, how you want to organize your code into objects so that for later on, it's a very easy reuse. OK, so now let's look at the code behind all of this stuff. OK, let's look at the, uh, OK, let's look at the coffee one. OK, coffee one, OK, um, some of this syntax may be a little um, off because I didn't really cover the details of the class, uh, but I give you a sense of um, what's going on. So first thing, we have a session, OK? And um, I'm going to, this require once is like an include, OK? It's a include the class online store.php. So this is the that module, the online store module that we wrote into a class. Then we're going to kind of include that. That saves us the 80%, 90% of the effort, OK? So we'll look at this code momentarily. Now, with this code, I'm going to say, OK, now my store ID is coffee. So I'm going to kind of um, indicating which store I'm looking at. I'm going to use kind of this online store.php as my generic store. And then each individual store, we just need to do a little bit of customization. And we're done. Okay, so this class online store.php is that generic storefront. And then we are just saying, okay, now with that, I have my coffee as my my store uh, in this page because I'm looking at the coffee.php. Okay, so I'm the coffee shop, and um, uh, this is uh, initially just an array. Okay, then we're Checking the online store. Okay, we have the the class. Okay, if it uh, exists, okay, I'm going to okay check the current store information from a session. Okay, again, we can save information onto the session, so we can store the kind of like the store ID. We could, and so that we know we're looking at the coffee shop. And then we this is set store. Okay, this is saying okay. Let's take the online store information, and I'm going to call the set store ID method, and that way I save which store I'm talking about in the object, so that in the generic store now I now say okay now the generic store 
I'm going to say your ID is now the coffee shop. So that's the customization I'm doing now. Then I'm going to go to say, okay, get the store, get the store information. First of all, let's get the store information. That will be the title, uh, the name of the store, the 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 motto or the the um, lingo of the store, and then the welcome message. I'll get that information, okay, and get the store information. Um, and let's go. We'll go look at what these methods um, entails. Um, and if user clicked on the link of adding an item, okay, that shopping cart add, then I'm going to call the um, the item because when they click, I will go into pass that item ID into a uh, the query string to the question mark. So this is the second that we learned in chapter nine. This is the second way of passing information to from page to page is through the query string. I'm going to do that for the when they click on the item to add. And then I'm going to just call the generic stores um, the class and then call the method or call the function of adding an item. Okay, we'll look at that code momentarily. So now this code, okay, is pretty much done. I'm 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 pretty much done. I re I kind of set customized the the generic store to have some uh, to pointing to my coffee shop and getting the product information right here, store information, and um, then I'm going to yeah here here this part is the generic store information, which is the top three things. Okay, the name, the lingo, and then the welcome message. Then I'm going to get the product information. I say, okay, now give me the generic product information, but because I set it, the store ID to be coffee, now the get product inf get product list. Okay, you can guess it will only retrieve the coffee store's product. We'll get the product, and then we're going to kind of display it. Okay. Now let's look at the class, the generic class code. Uh, generic class code here. Okay, so here's the class. So if you, if you have seen other programming language before, this is kind of similar. So you would say class, okay, and then the online store. Okay, and then the beginning of the class definition all the way to the end. Okay, so everything is in this class definition. Okay, this class by itself does not run. Okay, it's like your design template. It's a temp. It's a design. Okay, you only be able to use this code when you actually create the object. Okay. After you create the object, okay, um, this is where it says new online store. Okay. You, after you create the object based on the design, this is one. Now this store is kind of live and now you can call all the methods that you define in this code in this generic one like the we could get set store ID, this one, this function, get store information, get product. Now you can call it after you have uh, the new after you have the new store here. Okay, you create the object, now you have the object. It's like the analogy I used in my other class. Um, the class definition, this one, if we're thinking about like cars, okay, you would have a design blueprint of a Toyota Camry. Okay. That's the equivalent of this class. In that design blueprint, it should you you have all the features of this car, okay, and all the kind of properties, the engine size, a four door or um, what are some so there's some properties. Yeah, there, 
equivalent to these. And then the features, okay, the features of the car. Like like any other car, if you press the gas, the after you can okay, press all back up. Before you can drive you have to start the car. Okay, so you provide a method of feature that starting the car. You tap the key or punch the button, stop button, and you will start. And then you hit down gas pedal, the car should drive, right? So these are equivalent to these. Okay, what the car can do, these are functions. Okay, so this design have all of this in it, but it's not a actual car. It's a design, it's a concept. And then by the time you are using it, when you say new car or new online store, this is when you actually created the physical uh, car. Okay, in our case is the kind of the program element is now created. Okay. And then it's like the car roll off the assembly line, you have an actual car. Now you can actually do those things like drive, start on the car. On this car. If without creating it, the design blueprint won't be, it's, it's not a physical car, you can't drive it, you can't really call any of these functions. Okay, so that's the kind of concept I want, analogy. Now inside, okay, okay, we have the database connection for the online store because I kind of need that to do anything in interaction with the database. So that's one of the things I want to the data element I need for my online store. The store ID indicating whether which store I'm looking at and the order is an array. Okay, that's my order. Inventory, that's my product information. It's another array. So I have a database connection, a store ID and two arrays. One for the order, one for the inventory for the items. So that's my data elements for my online store class. And then the features, okay, this is the constructor, construct, is the constructor, the name for this function is a special one, it's because this is called when we are creating this car for the first time, this online store for the first time, when we say new online store, we are basically calling this code, okay. And in it, usually during the constructors where you are making the database connection, you're doing the prep work, initialization work. It's in the constructor. And then the, the destructor is where you no longer need the, you know, you're, you're done with this car, you're disposed. Um, or online store, I'm closing it, I close the page and I leave the store. Then this is where you usually have the cleanup code with where you have closed the database connections and things like that. So we're closing the database connection here. And the set store ID is where, okay, we're saying, okay, now if you give me the ID, if you give me whether it's coffee or electronics or antiques, if you give me that, I'm going to save that information to say, okay, now my generic one, I'm going to now look at the coffee. So this is how the online store, after you set this ID, okay, which I have it here, okay, then now this ID becomes coffee. If I call this one with the coffee, I call set a store ID with coffee, then my store ID now is going to be coffee. And then I'm going to run this query, the select star from inventory, will product ID like. If I'm doing coffee, it would be coffee. So this retrieves, the XQL string is basically retrieving the products for the specific store. Okay, so now I'm going to run this query and then, okay, the inventory array, okay, inventory array is going to be populated with the product information. Okay, so I'm going to retrieve it, the specific product from the database for this particular online store. I'm going to populate the inventory. Okay, 
In other uh, programming languages, you may say this dot, OK, or dot. Uh, in PHP, we use this right arrow to indicating class and then functions of that class you call is using the error. OK, other programming languages, you use dot. OK. Um, that's when we populate the, uh, all the, in, uh, the product information to the inventory. OK. And then um, we are going to uh, the shopping cart, initially, it will be blank. So now, the get store feature, we're going to retrieve, OK, and from the database where the store information is related to the specific store ID, like the coffee. We're going to retrieve the coffee information. And the get product list is, this one is basically going to display it OK, this one, set store ID in here, I'm populating the array with the information from the database, but not displaying it yet. This is only inventory array will have the inven inventory information. Now, the get product list is the one that we're going to formulate this HTML and put from the inventory array and display the data in the table format. OK. So that's that. That's the uh, get product list ID. It's basically displayed onto HTML table format. And then add item is going to be just we are adding the shopping cart, OK, the item that we have onto the shopping cart. OK, so this is a generic look at this class. A basically contained the in, the uh, features that we want this generic store to have. Like say, I want to retrieve the store information. The generic, uh, not the generic, I want to retrieve the store information for display. OK, the top, OK, let me go back here. I want this part, OK, uh, to be done. And this is getting store information that we coded. If I ask. We set the store ID to be antique, and then says stored, not dot, the, the error, and then get store information. I should get this part. OK, I set store ID, and then all this, this information is loaded in my inventory array. And when I call get it, uh, product info, I will get this part to show on the HTML. And then if I click on here, and that item should be getting into my shopping array. So this basic features we already coded in this generic online store class. Then the specific ones, we just set the ID to be the appropriate ID and call the appropriate method, and our program is done. Now, if you look at this one, this uh, electronics, it's pretty much the similar thing. I call the session star. OK, I set the store ID to be uh, electronic boutique. And my uh, I'm going to check to see if I'm already pointing to this online store. If not, I'm going to create the new online store and set ID to be the electronic boutique. And I'm calling the get store information to get the top. And I'm going to uh, call the store that gets product list so that I show the products on the page. And I'm done. Okay. Now if you have a fourth customer, okay, you don't need to recode any of these things. So all of this code you can reuse. You don't have to loop through the database. You don't have to loop through the database. And you don't have to come up with a query, because it's already tested and all good. So you don't have to recreate all of that. You can reuse this. Um, so that's the kind of the idea behind object-oriented uh, coding, is code reuse. Okay, Generalize, so you have a generic class. And then you apply that template kind of 
two different scenarios. Okay, um, that's what I want you kind of you to get in kind of rough idea of this object oriented. Um, any questions? You think this is good enough, or you want more? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, Ethan was asking about this, um, uh, the uh, store for the product, okay. In this case, I'm go, uh, hold on, let's go back to the online store code. Uh, yes, no, it's kind of a yes and no type thingy. Okay, let's look at this um, inventory. Okay, the inventory is an array, right? Um, however, it's when we're looping through the array. Okay, got it. product information. Uh, we are doing it here. Okay, here. Uh, here is where we retrieve from database and populate the inventory array. Okay, inventory array, array here, we have uh, put it into the inventory, this inventory, and uh, we have this inventory as a equal to, uh, let's see, we have this inventory, let me, I want to check to see if we have coded the key as a fixed or not. Row product ID inventory uh, equal to row product ID and then name. Uh, yes, we kind of coded this by a key. Okay, so these match the database uh, fields. In that case, then you know your database is your database have these four fields and your array kind of keyed on these four fields. Right. So in this case, um, you you are matching your inventory with your database. In this and this particular one, yes. In this uh, example, all the data was um, for all the stores. If I, I should go to the pudding and show you, all the um, store products are mixed in one database, one table. Okay, um, so let me go to pudding and do a quick one. Go to show you. To show you the data. Okay, login as C eighty six ninety nine. Okay, eighty six ninety nine. Come on. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, use CA8699 and show tables. Okay, so the store info and the inventory. So let's look at the inventory. Start from inventory. Okay, okay, you wrapped. So um, imagine if it's not wrapped. <laughs> okay, so inf it has a product ID and then name and then description and then price. So the uh, data is wrapped around. So the first thing is this coffee, 001, Jamaican coffee. And here's the description. Here's the um,
Okay, I just got kicked out of uh, CCC Confer, and now I'm reconnecting. Strange. Okay. All right, so here is the store information uh, table where you can see I have the Okay, here's the store ID name, description, and welcome message. And then CSS file, okay, uh, the style sheet file and the email address. So first one uh, record is coffee and then the name of the store and the, the, um, the lingo and then the uh, welcome message and your uh, style sheet. You, so you can specify a style sheet. Um, then the style sheet will be applied to the specific store once you set the store ID, okay? Because the style sheet is also created in the database. So if you want to change the style of the um, of the particular store, you don't really need to um, do any recoding. You can go to the database, okay? You can go to the database. Well, you you need to create that new style sheet, of course, and then put it into the specific place. And name it the name it the, the way that the database named it. You don't need to do anything, and then the new style should automatically appear. Okay, so you just need to put the kind of rename your new style sheet to be the the same as the the one that's saved in the database. Um, or you can go into the database and change the name of your style sheet to an like a two. Um, and then the new style sheet will take effect. And so that's the um, this is the store information, and then here's the antique and the electronic store information. So here's the way of kind of uh, reuse code and have your code more generic. Okay, um, and if you have a new product, uh, if you have a page where the user can put the product information in the database, okay, then it should automatically appear in that list. The new product should appear in the new product list. You don't have to recode anything. Okay. Any questions? And if you have a new store, you just put the add a record into the store information and add their products into the product information and then you would have a uh, like a generic, um, you kind of follow the code that you have with the others, and you will have your new store up in like maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, okay, rather than days. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I hear things. Any questions on any of this? Um, fetch associative array is the same thing as the fetch. Um, Fetch roles uh, in the book. There are examples of each. This is um, chapter eight, right? Can't find the field name. In most cases, it's because okay, your uh, your database. You you need to make sure okay when you do fetch associate. Okay, you're keyed on the same exact same name as what you have in the in the database. Okay, exact the same spelling. Any other tricks? Case sensitive, I would say yes to be to be cautious, case sensitive.
Um, uh, D, you can also, um, okay, as a debug, debugging tool, you will write your query on the web page, right? Uh, print out the query, okay, on as a debug. So copy the same exact um, query. Go to Putty, paste the same query into the database. And then get the result and look at the com headings. Okay, and look at the columns. Is is the data what you expect? Are you missing a column? Are you named the columns like exactly in the associated array, matching the, the columns that show up on when you execute the query in the database? Because if we're doing the development, we have a back door into the database so we can kind of verify our data that way to, to test our program. Any other questions? If not, you can sign off. And so this is our last class. So next Monday, no class. Um, our final will be from this coming Sunday till next Tuesday-ish. I will send out an email uh, tomorrow, give you the specifics. And um, so um, any questions, just let me know. And I really enjoyed this class this semester. Um, next semester, I'm not going to teach this class, so this is like my last time. Uh, I really appreciate everybody joining me every week faithfully <laughs> um, and give me the, um, you really make me feel energized and wanted to, to uh, come to my computer every Monday night. So thank you. Uh, chapter 10 homework and team project problems. Uh, what did I say on my on my um, on my sheet? Uh, project items for sure not. No exercise, no project items. I don't remember if I assigned you the quiz. Okay. Uh, I would say even if I assigned, forget the quiz. Okay. Uh, because I really didn't go over the concept that much. So. Uh, no chapter 10 assignment. OK, I will need to make a note to put that in my uh, email, too. So no uh, homework due for chapter 10. But keep up with your project. Uh, let me quickly ask, um, are, are you on track with your project in the general sense? Yes, no, for your project? Are you kind of on track? You're supposed to be at least at chapter 8, kind of? Yes, yes, oh, good, good, good. That's what I like to hear, OK, so that you don't have to spend a whole lot of time doing this uh, coursework during finals <laughs> exam week. Any other questions? Um, assignment, um, assignment, late assignment. So by the time that you finish final, it's Tuesday, right? Uh, I would say please submit everything by Wednesday, okay? Even if you're late, so we'll submit by Tuesday, ideally, but Wednesday is okay. Submit everything, the late assignment by Wednesday, okay? Dean, I will, I will stay so you can ask questions. How do you check the text file so you can load into the, OK. How do you check the text file? Oh, OK. The text file, when you are doing bulk load, um, in reality, you should be uh, the owner for the text file. OK, for our specific one, uh, problems, I put the text file onto the temp. OK, so you can go to the server, and if you have read rights to that file, so you can read it. OK, you go to, let me show you. 
you go to uh, I put all the um, text files in the temp under server from the root. Oh, the delimiter, if you open the file, you should be able to see. So you go back to the root. Uh, this is home. And then back one, back up. You go to the temp. Where's all the, for example, let's say the uh, page visits. If you open it up, uh, you kind of see. So here is comma. So the delimiter is comma for this file. Okay. So the delimiter you should know because you are the one that loading the text file. You should you should have the text file, or you should be provided with the text file. You have access to the text file. Okay. Because I loaded everything into here and then uh, kind of uh, for you, so you may not necessarily have checked all the text files for the delimiter, but if you check, you should know. OK, any other questions? Proverb file. OK, for the proverb file, you it's up to you. You want comma delimited. You want uh, tab delimited. You can make that up. OK, for your proverb file, I don't care what delimiter you use. As, you, as long as you, it's consistent, because you are creating the file. How do you load it into the table? You use the same thing. Load, um, load, uh, follow the same example. Okay, follow the same example. If you have comma delimiter, you have to say uh, delimited comma or something like that. And they, if you check Angel for scripts, okay, for scripting. The scripts of chapter seven, chapter eight. So there are examples. The delimiter doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter, but the load in file, if it's tab delimiter, you don't have to say delimiter. It's, that's the default delimiter. If it's uh, things other than tab, you have to, in your load data in file command, say delimited by something. OK, let, let me uh, see where I can show you the scripts. So chapter 10 is probably, this is not, OK. So OK, these two are not delimited. But let me go to chapter 9, uh, SQL scripts. OK, let's look at that. OK, opportunities, no delimiter. One of these chapters have a delimiter example. Uh, not here, chapter 7. OK, here. OK, here's the one that's delimiter specific. It's chapter 7. OK, load data in file local, this thing, OK, terminated by. OK, this is where you would provide the delimiter, OK, whatever you used. You see that? You got that? OK, good. Any other questions? When is your our final is from Sunday, OK, this coming Sunday to Tuesday, next Tuesday, OK? Uh, probably around 10 AM. 10 a.m. Sunday to uh, Tuesday, like 11:55 p.m. or 59 p.m. or let's say 55. Okay. Sunday, this coming Sunday, 10 a.m. 
I'll get up and, <laughs> and check to make sure the exam is open for everybody. Other questions? Project is due the same time as the final. Okay, what's what's? Um, I don't remember what's showing on the what's showing on the sheet. It's probably next Tuesday. But I give you an extra day. You can finish final early and then work on your assignment. Uh, yes. Hands on uh, part of the exam is due the same to uh, due date, uh, due time, Tuesday, 11, 59, 5 p.m. Oh, on the, is it on the assignment sheet I put May 18th as the due date for the project? Okay, I'll give you till the 22nd then. Okay, the last day of the exam is the last day you submit everything. Let's 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 make that. Um, so I give you a few days of extension for the project. Keep up with the project. Great. Thanks everyone. Have a good evening, a good night. Have a nice summer, a semester break.